every husband I get here to this point where they really understand their true value. And they understand that I can be safe in the middle of this chaotic storm of, of too much. Yeah. And how valuable that is to me and to you. Mm. Then you turn into a power couple. This is the Illuminate Podcast, and I am your host, Rebecca Boatman. I am fascinated with human relationships, from going on first dates to understanding attachment styles and how our personal spiritual mission plays a big role in all of it. I created this podcast to invite you into conversations with inspiring leaders and I as we explore different topics surrounding dating, relationships, money, and spirituality. Before we start, make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And my one ask and a great way that you can contribute to the podcast is to leave a five-star review. And now let's jump in. Today we have a very special guest, a very intelligent guest, Dr. Doug Brackman, who has also been my psychologist for the last two and a half years. He has changed my life in so many ways. And when I do a session with him, I need like at least three months afterwards to integrate just what was created within 60 minutes of working with him. And Dr. Doug is author of Driven, Understanding and Harnessing the Genetic Gifts Shared by Entrepreneurs, Navy SEALs, Pro Athletes, and Maybe You and Creator of the Driven Assessment and Shooting Meditation. With dual PhDs in psychology, Doug Brackman specializes in practices that hone in on the genetic skills of less than 10% of the population. Dr. Doug has spent his entire career working with top performers to help them overcome their limiting beliefs, stop their cycle of shame, and achieve the ultimate personal and professional successes. After receiving some feedback that his book fell short on understanding the perspectives of driven women, Dr. Doug has focused much of his energy on supporting driven women and helping them bounce and thrive in the areas of finance, romance, and health. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. How long have I known you? So, um, like three years now, or two and a half. No, longer. I've heard your name for a long time, but worked with you for like two and a half. Yeah. Started two and a half years ago. So what is the biggest difference from Rebecca two and a half years ago to now? Mm, girl to woman. Oh, yeah, I would say. And the first thing that comes to mind, too, is in that in that process and you supporting me so much with that is I just remember it being so confusing <laughs> and feeling like I couldn't just almost feeling like um, it was chaotic and cloudy. And even when you had me read the book, She, it made no sense. <laughs> like this book makes no sense. And then when I was going through the breakup, literally the whole book was like felt like my life. Yeah. It's like every I, I actually understand this book for the first time. What is that chaos? That's because it, it's I have I have a thirteen and fifteen year old daughter. Yeah. And learning for the first time in my life what it means to actually live as a woman yeah. through their eyes, and it's blowing me away. Really? <laughs> that. I am so grateful I can pee standing up. It is it is the most confusing, <laughs> chaotic, filled with thousands of emotions yeah. that they believe they have to make sense of. Mm, yeah. I can't imagine that as a man. Yeah. You you make me you remind me of when I would ask, like I've asked men like I, I'd say like I just wish you could come in my shoes for one second. Like understand where I'm coming from and every response is I don't wish that <laughs> I don't wish that at all. But th this internalization of value is kind of where my work's going now, of that yeah. I can finally, for the first time in my life in the last probably five years, really understand the true value of women, yeah. of women, of, di the, of this chaotic, crazy, everything is connected to everything, mm. and how unbelievably valuable that is to me as a man. Yeah, we explain that. So this this world of fatherless daughters, mm -hmm. and it is just as sad for the men, mm -hmm. and that's a horrible statistic, suicides are going <laughs> skyrocketing mm -hmm. for two primary groups. 
13 to 15 year old girls mm. and 40 to 45 year old men. Wow. Yeah. So it, it is this breakdown of men not understanding their value to women. Yeah. And women really not having a reflection back from a person, a man, that sees their value that they can't actually see. All they feel is chaos and scared. And do you feel like a man seeing a woman's value helps it deepen in herself? It, it allows her the opportunity to see that what you are is the greatest gift to mankind. Mm. Women. Yeah. And this demand, you know, women's rights and all of that, you know, that the, they need to claim more value but they're, they're not owning the value they already have. Mm. And so it sends a whole bunch of women in the wrong direction. And then when you're dating, mm -hmm. you, know, you look at the smile on your face. What? <laughs> because until you, until you actually understand your real value, yeah. most women are narcissist magnets. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> smile <laughs> on your face. You can't even keep a straight face. So what did the do for, the, for, do for you in that chaos? Mm. awaken a rage that's for sure rage yeah that i was terrified of that when i i was like this is i was terrified of it and then until i was expressing it i think prior to that i was almost scared of it but the rage around boundaries it was like i swung hard the other way of like what's okay and what's not okay when for a while it was not that way it was hidden dormant just hiding Women's rage. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about it. I also felt shame with rage. Oh. So the, the rage, mm -hmm. three basic things that fall into the bucket of anger. We have frustration, which is a blocked goal. I experienced you very frustrated. Mm -hmm. Then we have anger, which is the healthiest emotion there is. Yeah. It's a call for boundary. Stop hurting me. Stop. That's anger. Yeah. Rage is where you're feeling suffocated. And this, this suffocation where somebody, you, it feels like this, what you're like, you're literally going to explode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at your face. <laughs> I was like, just remember, and maybe I told you, I was driving, like driving my car, just full on, like raging, raging. out, like literally to the, just reckless, really reckless, you know, just dry, like, and it felt like it needed probably because it was so built up, maybe because I wasn't expressing anger or really at all. Right. And that, that she book, Yeah. What is it, how did it start to make sense to you in this process? What do you mean? What, what speaks out to you first about that rage? Uh, Who uh, was pissed? Aphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> Aphrodite was alive. She was like coming back <laughs> full on. So for everyone who has not Red She, it, it is a story and narrative about growth from girl into woman. Yeah. And we have two, this is the book anyway, you have Psyche, yeah, which is this demanding drama queen, little borderline personality, always threatening suicide, always running to the bedroom, always, oh, please chase me. Yeah. Then you have Aphrodite. Give me that process for you. Yeah. Because I, I literally witnessed the transformation of, from Psyche into Aphrodite and then this middle ground yeah. of where you're integrating both. So tell me about Psyche. Tell me about Aphrodite. Tell me about that shift for you. Yeah. So Psyche, which you helped me see, I was much more comfortable with or more familiar with or would go visit more when I was uncomfortable or... or um, in a breakdown or needing something, I would go to that un untamed, unhealthy <laughs> chase, you know, slam closet doors, like um, hide in the closet or um, anything to avoid or but essentially create, right? Like a, an attempt to create connection in a, a destructive way. Desperately seeking this man to come save you. Yeah. And that that is the daddy wound. Mm. How do I get attention from dad? I feel that. Yeah, and, and feel let that emotion come up yeah. because this this emotion that you're feeling right now is good. Yeah. How how is it good? To feel. 
Maybe to be here. How is Psyche different now than she was? Because this is Psyche. This is that little girl. This is that scared. Um, that I feel like I I can hold her. I can feel your hand on your chest. Yeah. <laughs> it's that. Okay. So where she is, though, is right here. Mm -hmm. She's this soft, sweet, as the book says, a little dew drop, just the most precious pearl in the world. Yeah. And then Aphrodite. <laughs> to look She's at. a raging storm. <laughs> Describe how. How did that transformation happen? It was like a pendulum swing. I was swing. scared of the rage. Yeah. And and then it was like a pendulum swing, I feel like, where I went so far into it. Um, or meaning like so far into Aphrodite, like from Psyche. It almost it wasn't like a smooth transition no. at all. <laughs> it was like usually, very yeah. and very selfish, honestly. Oh, I that's feel like an interesting insight. I feel like I made I was like I would even call out like I'm making a selfish decision. Like it was almost like I could see it, but now looking back, I'm like, okay, I could have been gentler, but I almost feel like in all my relationship dynamics I um started to be more like wanna protect myself, but almost like over with with some resistance too. Yeah, perfect. So Aphrodite is this side of women that is finally figuring out that dad's not going to show up. Mm. And it is this temper tantrum, for lack of a better word, but it is so unbelievably important to actually embrace that truth that no one's going to meet Psyche's needs. No one out there. Wow. And as I talk to you, you know, it's my joke about being in your 20s as a woman is allowing Prince Charming to die. Yeah. <laughs> look at that look on your face. <laughs> I'm like, it's true. How is it true? What do, what do you what do I mean? What do you hear when I say that? Like how old are you now? You're still a baby. You're like 33, right? No, I'm 30. You're 30? Yeah. Oh, you're even more of a baby. <laughs> 30. You're right on November. time. Yeah. I feel like it's a reality and and I, I just that journey also can almost be very scary or terrifying but also the most liberating Ooh. experience so and that's my my saying for the last couple of weeks is um how does courage feel good does it yeah it feels fucking horrible and really or maybe because the fear is present to have courage it, it, as you just said it was an awful it was it, it it's overwhelmingly but i'm still moving yeah and i went through it yeah and so describe that transition like in the in it mm -hmm. oh, i mean i want to die <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to die i was it was terrible you didn't kill yourself as psyche no. nor did you murder someone else as <laughs> aphrodite i remember wanting just feeling so much discomfort and being on my knees and, and crying and, and in the middle of the night and crying to God like verbally, like out loud by myself and feeling like almost like it's almost like everything in my my life came crumbling down is what yeah. it felt like. Everything I knew, everything I thought I knew. Now I'm in such a different spot, but I remember I just remember pr praying for this spot almost or like wanting to get to this spot. And then how did you so did this? <clears throat> new person yeah that's not psyche nor aphrodite that is is starting to understand her real power yeah and starting to understand when you yeah. have kids and you're married and that that and then you'll embrace more and more of that power but how does this feel more powerful than either psyche mm. trying to feel her power it feels more centered and um physically yes i would say physically more centered and almost um and i don't know if people can see the wa watching this so go back and tell me more about psyche um there watch the face <laughs> everyone everybody can see the face what is the face <laughs> is that you can go stand in that that it it it's a beaming smile. Mm. It's a childlike innocence. It is It is fun. It is goofy. It is laughing. It is also terrified. 
Yeah. It is also slamming doors. It is also, but this shift of your body. Yeah. And now go to Aphrodite. <laughs> what was the angriest? Yeah, mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And you feel that flash of like, I can, I can take on Aphrodite if I need to. Yeah. And, and also realizing, I didn't even realize, Doug, how after I became familiar and wrecked with my own anger or, or Aphrodite and let her come alive and experience her, I didn't even realize I had this whole weight that I was carrying around that I felt like I would go everywhere with it, but I didn't even realize it was there until it was gone. Where I was like, I it felt like I actually see my place in the world. Oh, feel your hands. And so <laughs> this movement that you do, yeah. feel how, what does that do inside? Feel this center line inside and everybody watch your, everybody watch your face. Um, because this is the new woman. Yeah. And it's based in wisdom. Mm-hmm. And feel the heart though. Yeah. Yeah, there. And it's, you were praying for this. Yeah. This center line of really that God the Father. Yeah. Yeah, there. Do you feel that? Oh, you I can into. rest in this. Yeah. And it's that center ground. And as you just said, there's so much more wisdom here. Yeah. There's not frenetic anger, outrage. Yeah. Nor is there enrage. Wow. What's the wow? What do you mean? It's almost like from there, I feel like you can see so much more clearly is where what the wow is. Yeah, and that clarity, that clarity is your soul. Ooh, let's go here. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Really? So soul, you know, the way I teach it in my book, we have monkey mind, yeah. you have the up here, the brain inside between your ears. Then we have the body or the elephant, and this monkey mind up on top of the elephant is trying to control the elephant. And as I say in my book and as I teach, which one are you? You are both Mm -hmm. and neither. And it's that neither insightful pure consciousness, consciousness that is able to actually witness You have Aphrodite and Psyche up here, and you have Aphrodite and Psyche in here. Then you have this third thing that can pull from the amazing qualities of Psyche and pull from the amazing qualities of Aphrodite and use this in a different way for a different purpose. Rather than self-protection, it starts to become other protection. Why, and I have a question, why did God make not amazing qualities of psyche and, or why do those exist? Oh boy, here we go. So, spiritual qualities. Mm -hmm. And stealing from Paul, check a little bit, but it's pure consciousness of love is what God is. And as I've explained a million times, God is, is, God is love. You can't understand love. It's a feeling. It's also an action. It's also an experience. It's also a way of being. It's all of these things. It's incongruent with the way our elephant is wired. Our elephant is wired for fear. Why? To survive. Why? Because we're monkeys. Why? (laughs) Why are we here? (laughs) Do you know why you're here? Mm. Simple. It's a trick question. Because two people 30 years ago had sex. 30? Oh, okay. Oh, I was thinking way, way back. <laughs> so I guess my parents. Your parents. Yeah. That's why you were here. You think my soul chose to come in? The Kabbalah, the Kabbalic teachings around that is the one that's kind of anchored for me. Yes. We pick this lifetime. We pick our parents. Mm-hmm. Both for their sake and our own. And that ability to actually really dive into understanding this soul, this third thing that is, 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 as Carl Jung said, the big S self, not the small self, not the ego self, not what people think of me, not what I think I'm, I might be inside and scared to actually show everyone. That's all of our flesh, but this spiritual then you have a fleshly nature 
and I have a fleshly nature, and my fleshly nature is fear. Your fleshly nature is fear. If you are driven, you know, which is what my book is, we are wired for a lot of fear. I am briefly pausing this episode to invite you, if you are ready to access bravery and start challenging your current idea of self and take brave action to unlock a new sense of self within you so you can be a match for and manifest the life and the relationship that your soul desires, or if anything on my show has inspired you to begin the journey inside our powerful online Meet the Frequency membership. It is my best kept treasure. It is a year long membership to access multiple powerful workshops that we have, plus exclusive access to our online community to guide you and support you on your journey to love. The link is in the description and you can use our complimentary special code illuminate for $20 off. And now back to the episode. We're wired for a world that is, you know, very traumatic and chaotic. And so we have to learn how to deal with this fear in our flesh. And God's spiritual nature, and you think about, you know, the best qualities of a woman and psyche, tenderness. It's going to make me cry. Mm -hmm. Listening to my daughter, (laughs) listening to my 15-year-old daughter negotiate Mm -hmm. her cell phone back from her mother Mm -hmm. for two and a half hours did she win? She did. Oh! <laughs> but it wasn't in trouble. She was just, they were playing, and I would watch her, my daughter's psyche come out. Mom, please. I'm so sweet. Let me give you back rubs, tickles. Mm-hmm. And my wife's Aphrodite go, no, I think I want water and ice cream instead. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. And you watch that, and then the tenderness and the sweetness. It is so intense from a empath man's perspective. Mm. And, and I, I covet it. It's like, oh my God, you guys can have such unbelievable connection with each other. Mm. And a man can't. We just don't have that nature. Wow. And it is beautiful. And then it, about 15 seconds, 20 seconds after this beauty is expressed between psyche and psyche, what happens? <laughs> they start to pull apart. Oh. What do you mean by that? And, and you feel this flip of the magnets. And that ability for women to truly connect in that deep way mm. is something as a man I can't, I can't, I can't have. Mm. And so it is, a, it is something that I wish I have and something that I want. And so I pursue it one of the best qualities of men, God's nature, God is always pursuing us. The present moment is always chasing us. And we are in this constant state of rebelling against that. From the fear? Because we're scared. Wow. What are we afraid of? Being overtaken by it? So that's a great question. Why... Fear. What is fear? Fear is a, a, a sense of separation. Every cell in my body wants to be connected to the cell next to it. Why? Because if I cut myself, it hurts. And so that separation of cells and we are cling together in fear. That's what holds us together. And so we have to get into the spiritual development And you can see how psyche lives in your body. Yeah. And Aphrodite lives in your body. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Also in your head. Mm -hmm. Comes up with very creative narratives. But this third soul element that you're able to pull from how God made you Mm -hmm. as psyche. And God made, you know, and the model I use for relationships is simple. We have a, a man which is an objectifier, meaning that we see things as two. Mm. And as I'm learning, we are very objectifying creatures. And I'll disclose a little bit more about it. I don't know who invented volleyball shorts, mm-hmm. 
but it wasn't a guy, I promise, <laughs> because <laughs> it wasn't a father, let me yeah. say it that way, because I watch my 15-year-old and 13-year-old daughter watching their volleyball games and all these little girls in shorts as a flesh-based, lust-based man. Yeah. It is it, like, oh, my God. Because I don't want to project my fleshly, negative, objectifying, libidinal, sexual energy in that. That's yeah. creepy. Yeah. But my true nature, that present moment nature where I can <sighs> drop in and that protective father energy is what all women are craving. That protective sense that you're more than just this sexual object. Because in a woman's world, everything is connected to everything mm. with emotion. Mm. Everything is connected to it everything. It has a meaning and feeling. Meaning and feeling. And and da, 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 da. But you think about the model, you look through a telescope, and you look through a microscope, you see the same thing is God's design. And so you see a solid mass slowly leading this ball of chaos around it. Mm. But the it's not really chaos. It's in this nice, beautiful orbit. Oh, wow. Not getting pushed away, not getting sucked in. And that is this father energy that, that as a man, to really be protective of my two little girls, mm. of you, mm. of all my clients, whether they're men or women, is that that is not of my fleshly nature. My flesh is selfishness. But true divine masculine, that, that really, I just want to protect you. Mm. And I'm willing to do really stupid shit to do it, like go to war. Yeah. And that, okay, I'm in. But I'm doing it because of the preciousness of women. Yeah. And, you know, women that don't own their, you know, that are fighting for more power, don't understand that they already all have it. They are the source of that true connection to God, of the tender connections, yeah. of the soft connections, of the chaotic connections. And that that's what, you know, as, as a father, really understanding there's wisdom in my little girl's bitching for 20 minutes. Mm. Because what she's telling me is, oh my God, all of these potential bears in this world. That, and most people come from a herd Attachment style. That's right. Meaning that when a cheetah runs into a herd of gazelles, what do they do? They yeah, scatter. Disperse. And they, good luck, you're on your own. Oh, <laughs> to each other. They get... To each other. And so mm -hmm. it is this, when shit hits the fan, people bail. Yeah. And, you know, I'm scared to tell my boyfriend whatever about all this stuff that's going on because he'll leave me. He'll think I'm crazy. He'll think I'm full of drama. Too he'll much. Think, too much. Yeah. And my little girls are scared of that at times with me. Wow. And because they are too much. And it is this ability for me, though, to see the value in what they're trying to teach me. Who are they too much to? Mostly themselves. Mm -hmm. Their fear that they're too much. Yeah, that's, I think, important because I hear that a lot from women. Very, very often. They're afraid that they're too much. Yep. What do you, what does that mean to you? Mm. I think it could mean in terms of expression, um, whether it's taking up space or it's expressing, the, expressing sadness or different emotions that someone's, they're not comfortable with, therefore they're attracting most likely someone who also is not comfortable right. with. Right, and so it is what 40 to 45-year-old men are craving and not getting is understanding how important they are. Yeah. Makes me emotional. Describe the emotion. Yeah, I can feel into the, the probably the loneliness of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it expands my heart. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Women are put on this planet to help men with that. Not the dishes. <laughs> Back then they don't like the dishes. Seriously. Yeah. Because it's it, without that, it's making me cry because I I had no idea how alone I was 
until I actually can witness how connected you can be. And I only saw that because of my wife and daughters. Wow. Because you were like, once you had it, you were able to feel it. Feel it. it. And then move forward. And move towards it. Yeah. Every husband I get here to this point where they really understand their true value. And they understand that I can be safe in the middle of this chaotic storm of, of too much. Yeah. And how valuable that is to me and to you. Then you turn into a power couple. Mm. And it is this other attachment that starts to really develop. And this is where I'm at with you in therapy is that we're figuring out this new style of attachment to where, you know, and I mentioned earlier, my daughters and wife talking about all the bears in this world that might attack us. Yeah. We're a wolf pack, meaning that what happens when a bear attacks one of the wolves? What do the, all the other wolves do? Um, I don't know, but I could guess. What? <laughs> then they, they'll, they probably try and get the bear off. Yeah, we kick the shit out of the bear. Yeah. And that is what men. Like I got this bear. Yeah. And so I need to hear all the bears. And I'm. It's not rational. It's not logical. It's not supposed to be. It is emotional. And so as this dating process, and I'll put it back on you, look at you. <laughs> so now that Prince Charming is dead. Yes. How is dating different? Um, what is this transformation at 30? Yeah. Carl Jung said that women don't stop being daughters until they're 33. Really? Which means, the way he described it, is that we we are finally able to actually, women are finally able to actually take on their own identity mm. rather than pushing against what mom and dad wanted me to be. Yeah. Rather than, it's this. It's like, well, what do I want? Yeah. And that boundary thing that you mentioned, I mean, look at your smile. I have a question over here about boundaries too. Go. I mean, how yeah. is it How is it now yeah. with this new insight dating? Um. Uh, this is the first time I'm sharing it, so I'm excited to hear your response to it. Like, almost because I'm seeing someone now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> almost like it's like I see it differently. Like I see it almost feels like a like a team and a partner, and it, it it's. So I want everybody to see her hands <laughs> as it going like this. It's heart led. Mm. Yeah. yeah, there that'll make you cry, yeah. and then you go to go into a mudra to actually <laughs> embrace it and embody it. You feel it. How is it powerfully different? And well, it feels like there's room for my power. Please explain that to me. Like it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's accepted and honored and appreciated. Oh. Which it then I, I feel like there's space to to expand into it is the best way to describe it. Beautiful. Internally. Yeah. yeah. It feels like a physical change is happening. Yeah. Yeah, that's How do you think boys are looking at you different? Mm. Boys or men or boys? <laughs> um Boys or men? Can you tell the difference yet? I think I think almost it feels like both always exist and but they operate in but hopefully one more than the other and also depending on how i'm showing up right or how i'm seeing them and as you teach me what i'm illuminating yeah yeah and that that boys can't turn into men until they have a queen energy in their world yeah kind of hippie-ish but they can't become a king until they actually experience someone looking at them as a king and seeing them that way, true. Like, and truth. mothers are not wired to do this. Why? Because they always want to protect their baby? Mm -hmm. Wow. They don't want to let the kid go. Uh -huh. And so dad has to step in and actually really step in and teach their sons what a man is. Yeah. That in every culture and tradition used to have you know, rites of passage, 13, you got bar mitzvah and, you know, Native Americans, you got cut and bled and you shared blood and you did these rituals, usually involving leaving your mother and living separately with men for about six months or a year. Wow. Only with men. Only with men. Wow. 
because that feminine influence confuses our masculine energy. We have to discern my ugly masculine from the divine masculine. Whoa. I can't sort that out. That's your task. <laughs> you help me sort it out. <laughs> wow. So, so to make it tangible, like thinking about a woman in a relationship or a woman who's like ready to attract, when you were talking about the protective masculine energy and I know women are like, how do I get that? <laughs> but that's what they're asking right now. So um, what's, when you say we, this is kind of a question with a statement because you've helped me with this so much, like approaching that versus I feel like before Psyche would throw a fit and hand make wrong. And then of course, like the man. And Aphrodite wants to stab him with scissors to get <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> this, yeah, this, this illumination is the key part of it. Yeah. You have to see it first. And that all of your women saying, God, I want that. And this, what you said earlier about how I could feel into that. Mm -hmm. But it's not coming from an outside source totally anymore. Wow. Well, then they would literally start to see all of their dates differently. Every man on the planet differently. Wow. And as I teach women, and I'll be teaching you this, when you marry a man, they're, they're not even, when you start dating a man, they will be influenced by you, mm -hmm. by design. Men aren't done cooking yet. Mm -hmm. And I always teach women, who does the guy you're dating become a year from now under your tutelage, under your guidings? Mm -hmm. Does he become more of that divine masculine, protective, ridiculously well-informed faith? We're going to be okay. Like, really, we're going to be okay. That's a joke I always say about my therapy with new clients, new female clients for the first six months is blah, 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 you're safe, blah, 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 you're safe, blah, 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 you're safe, right? <laughs> yeah. And slowing but down. You'd always help me slow down. Slow and down. Slow down. And then Because that, that is what, when you have this object, and I just did dad energy with you. That's mm -hmm. what I do. This dad object in the middle. My daughters can go, all this chaos. But I can come into orbit and actually get reflected back that that chaos has value, that chaos has meaning, that chaos helps me lead. Yeah. And so God, please talk to me. Yeah. Tell me these things. And it, it, then it becomes for them to internalize that value. And I'm watching my little 13s and 15 year olds. I mean, it's just like, how do I, how do I use this, this power that I have? Yeah. You know, and my 13-year-old is ridiculously pretty. And it's not like, yay. It's like, as a dad, it's like, no. <laughs> Tasers. <laughs> no. Yeah. But she walks into a room with her little volleyball shorts on. And everybody, all the little 13, 15, 18 dads, um, turn and look. And it, it's because she's really pretty. Because she's being objectified. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't understand why I'm getting attention. And so as a dad... That's not the kind of attention you want. You want this kind of attention. Yeah. You want this deep holding, safety, protective. I value you for being a crazy woman. And I do. Yeah. But you're not crazy. It's just emotion. Yeah. And if I don't have that helping me steer this ball of chaos, I'm lost. Most mm -hmm. importantly, I don't have heart. I'm mm -hmm. empty. And so as you are dating, and I'll ask you yeah. again, so when you go on a date, how, if you can, remember back before mm -hmm. and now that you've done this work, how is it different? What's the biggest difference? Oh, all, um, being able to also identify when someone's in, into, like, in their body or not, which has been really fascinating um, and interesting. And then also, so, so that even outside of dating, just notice, and myself being much more aware of it and yep. consistently working on it. Um, but also appreciating stillness and experience. Oh, and it's so beautiful. <laughs> You'll make me cry. And Because and that's that, that psyche stillness. It's stillness with beauty. So embodiment, the way I teach embodiment, 
is authenticity. Authenticity is not a feeling. Authenticity is is embodiment. Mm-hmm. That I'm authentically here in the room. I'm not trying to guide and, you know, shut down emotions that I might be feeling that are scary, that it send you the wrong signals. Nor am I trying to be in my body some other kind of way. I'm just in my body. Yeah. And that authenticity is one of the ground things for actually potential manhood. Not essential, but it helps. Wow. And then what else? What else do you see when you date? Um, I think, and I want to, what's interesting, and I want to share this with you and get your insight on it, and I think it will help people who may experience this, but now um, dating someone who who has, is so good at like acknowledging me from his heart and truly, like I can, I can see it in his eyes. His eyes will get teary, and he's so sincere. And I'm like, and there's times when I, I'm watching my my nervous system struggle to receive it. Yeah. Like I'll watch my nervous system almost like I'll become a, like feel I feel shut down, mm-hmm. and I'll and I'm like, oh, I should be I should be crying. I should be <laughs> feeling oh, this. I should. <laughs> you know. Compared to, but it, it's. Let me say that really quickly because it helps very helpful for most people. Shooting on yourself for how you feel yeah. is crazy. Yeah. I should feel different than the way I do mm-hmm. compared to what? Worms? Mm-hmm. Compared to a hundred other people? Mm-hmm. It, it's it's that noticing that it feels so good for you mm-hmm. because it's what you've been craving. Mm-hmm. Pushes on all of this worthiness crap, all of the shame stuff, all of the stuff as a girl. Mm-hmm. How do you react to that? Psyche and run away or Aphrodite and hold yourself through it? Yeah. You hold yourself in stillness. You hold little Psyche mm-hmm. and it's sweet and you can excuse yourself from the table and just, man, that's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. I need to go pee. <laughs> Get up and, <laughs> and go pee. And go pee and come back. Yeah. And it, it, it is, but that's the work. Yeah. And you've helped me. Is this guy too soft? No. Ooh. What do you mean? He's also very masculine. And what do you, what do you, divine masculine? What do you see? What are the masculine qualities in this guy that you like? Us. Uh, well, stillness or the ability to actually to fully be here and just so he can be a stable object grounded in the very grounded and like nowhere else and I, it took a while for me to get to so you actually recognize it <laughs> yeah oh, and yeah. psyche wants to push on him and pull on him to see if we can move him off and make him <laughs> fucking crazy i think i remember one time i was laying there and i was like i was like plotting meltdowns in my head <laughs> Like in two days, literally, I watched my thoughts. Doug, I was like, in two days, I'm having a massive meltdown in Seattle, and I watched it, and I started laughing. I told him, I was like, I just had this. and you told him, yeah, and he just laughed. He's like, he's like, I'm ready for it. He's like, how did you do? You trust him? Yeah. There, feel that. What is that different? Because you didn't have this before. Um, I feel like this the the stillness and the groundedness and the way he he speaks and talks and like I feel the the wholeness of it almost like the truth of like what he's saying is what he means and I feel it in his energy so it also supports the trust yeah how does psyche meet it how she wants to she wants to test it drama bombs hand grenades yeah pull the pin launch it make the comment yeah <laughs> See, that kind of shit <laughs> yeah um how to say yeah psyche because yeah this this part of this she book and you just captured it perfectly they they talk about two sisters coming into your head oh yeah i remember one saying you're not pretty or one's attacking him saying he's really a monster he's not all that he's a yeah. he's a piece of shit he's and the other one attacking you mm. at once and they take turns <laughs> and beat the shit <laughs> And it, it is this integrated stillness piece. It's something to value and appreciate. Yeah. And that, when he sees it in you, yes, it becomes overwhelming to you. How are you learning to, to hold still in it? Well, you've helped me so much to um, 
become aware of the sensations in my body. So I did that. I can remember where, like, you know, I remember exactly what we were, like, where I was sitting. And yeah, they and... feel that in your face. Yeah. And it's those initial laydowns of disconnection. Yeah. Where you feel that wolf pack, like, holy shit, this guy might not actually bail if I turn into a bear. Yeah. <laughs> look at that look on your face. I'm the bigger, that. God damn it. <laughs> That's so fascinating to me. I'm like sure so many women are laughing right now thinking about because we do. We have all these but like, let's do this, this. And then when you really become aware and watch that like circus. So, it's as a man, funny. As a man, after a really nice date in the shower afterwards yeah. and we're washing our hair, we're not thinking about the date anymore. Mm. We're thinking about nothing. We're thinking about going to bed. We're good. Yeah. And that is a huge gift to women if they let it be. Why? Because we're okay. Yeah. The date was fine. It was great. I'll see you again. Okay. Women on the other hand, you guys are like about to, <laughs> here to it's like, what do I need to do to 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 get this guy close enough to me so I can actually be in his orbit? Wow. Okay. This is why so many women, whether they are interested, and I'm not even interested, want them to ask for a second date yeah. almost even. So but that like, is this divine masculine leader. It, it's pursuing. Yeah. And all the guys out there that resent women because we have to pursue them. That's a divine calling. Wow. And it is every boy out there that's oh my god well she has responsibility in the relationship too and my needs aren't being met mm -hmm. is a boy yeah <laughs> look at the smile on your face but then becoming i remember not being aware of that and feeling responsible and feeling at fault and it was hell to be honest but then say that again slowly because there <laughs> every woman out there and i'm teaching this to my daughters yeah <laughs> like believe almost like taking on the resentment take, or taking it on or feeling like it's my fault and this and that and taking on not discerning and taking on the responsibility and then feeling weighted down and and um yeah like there was no way to win and versus having discernment of this is his this is mine and and also permission to a lot like they can if they, someone wants to be in resentment like versus making it wrong as well yeah and that that but this this point that i'm trying to make i saw his stillness and he liked what was reflected back. I promise you. Yeah. Guys don't believe it, you know, and that this ability for men to see that when I'm still and I look at you guys just like relax into my stillness. Yeah. And so it's like, whoa, that's a hell of a lot easier than trying to explain myself or listen for the problem that I'm trying to solve. Like, what's she bitching about now? Yeah. It's like, stop. Stillness. Listen, it's not about you. Yeah. It's about their fears and their bears and all these very creative stories you all create in your head. Yeah. It's like, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Holy shit. Series. And none of that is true. Yeah. I hear it all. I understand it all. It's not true. You're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that divine masculine anchor. Mm -hmm. That you see me do, and you learn to trust. Mm -hmm. That takes a long time. How long? 18 months at least. Really? 18 months. Wow. That's what I always give people that kind of window because it takes a couple of, it takes a couple of birthdays or a couple of holidays to really feel like this guy's going to shit on you. So and do, shit do you on wait you. to get engaged after 18 months? It's almost smart. You can. It's, it's, it's. You have to get through the period of, I love the way this guy makes me feel. Yeah. And he has to get through this idolization that you're the princess that he's been waiting for. Mm -hmm. And you have to, hopefully you did it before him, figure out this ain't, this ain't Prince Charming. Yeah. There is no Prince Charming. Yeah. Is this guy able in 18 months, two years, 10 years, who is, how does this prince become a king? And understanding that his king energy is divine. It's not from him. From spirit? From spirit. Wow. And that ability for him, that's my joke about, you know, it took me a long time to figure out that I'm not the king. But I know him. Mm. And I know the king. 
but I need women in my world, apparently a lot of them, to, to, ah, all the bears and all the chaos and holy shit, there's a lot of, da, 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 da. I hear it all and a mix, the full catastrophe yeah. of my house. The storm. The storm. We're, we're good. Wow. And they can see and appreciate my stillness, my divine masculine, not resent me for all the shit that I don't do. But actually see that if I can, if there's real bears, nothing is more valuable for a husband to actually go and fight a real bear. Wow. And that working through this, this, he doesn't believe me that it's really a bear. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of this. He doesn't believe me that it's really a bear. Wow. And I'm going to pull out Aphrodite and stab him. Yeah. Or I'm going to throw a temper tantrum and go run into the bedroom and, you know, I'm going to prove to him that it's a bear because I'll become one. Whoa. And that ability for you to actually say, what did it stop, stop, stop. It's not about you. It's not about anything wrong. I'm just scared. Mm. Mm. And drives me insane. I'm doing my damn just to get my daughters not to do this. Women that are out there trying to find the least ugly guy. Rather than actually seeing the guy who has the most potential for divine masculine. When you say the least, the least ugly, the guy. least lustful, least prideful, he's not mm. that bad of a narcissist. <laughs> I mean, that is right. Like the <laughs> look at your face. Like they're trying to it, it, like play it safe almost yeah. in a versus um, understanding the power. Not of- settling for less. Not settling for something. Yeah. That doesn't have the potential to really bloom into something big. Yeah. And, you know, it, it is because then, as you are experiencing now, so three months into this relationship, mm-hmm. what is the transition from dating into, well, here's my, we have recreational sex, mm-hmm. nice way to say it. And we also have courting. Mm-hmm. Courting is this accurate assessment about what our lives will look like together if we blend them yeah what's the dowry that you're going to bring what are you bringing to the table what am i bringing to the table and what does it look like yeah that is courting Mm -hmm. then we have recreational sex on the other side this entire thing in the middle is dating Mm. and dating is about getting to know yourself yeah not about the other in the experience in the experience of that's why i always always feel like dating and is a really cool opportunity for people to get to know themselves. That's what it is. So what would you tell the woman? Because sometimes women don't want to date and they put it off. And so it's you think it's aspects of themselves they don't want to see. Exactly. It's their shadow. Yeah. And they, it looks, it, it's masked in the form of this is exhausting. Right. I can see the ugly feminine in my daughters. Mm-hmm. The need for controlling everything and the need to manipulate. It's like, ugh. Mm-hmm. And that just chaos. But I see the beauty in it. Mm -hmm. I can see the beauty in your chaos. Mm -hmm. And that, as I you experienced, it it, until you actually start this work, you don't know someone who's looking at you as a woman and really seeing the beauty of you as a woman until you have a hopefully doing my damnedest, my lips to God's ears, to for my daughters. Mm -hmm. Like I really see the beauty in your tears and your chaos and you worrying about. Your, what shoes you're wearing today and in full-on meltdown mode at 13. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's not ridiculous. We're changing a million times. Oh, like... my God. It is, but it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's a pain in my ass. Yeah. But it's so beautiful to be at that, in that. Yeah. And you know what, sweetheart, no matter what shoes you wear, you're going to be okay. I know that in my knower as a dad. Mm -hmm. And don't let the fear, don't let your flesh turn you into spinning chaos hell. Yeah. Or when it does happen, kind of becoming aware of it and coming back to Right. And dad, these are my real bears. Yeah. Dad, I'm scared because they made fun of those other shoes two weeks ago and I can't believe it. And it's like, oh, sweetie, I get it. Yeah. Come here. So empathizing. Come here and no, let me, let me, let me tell you that I see the bear. That bear was really scary, but now you're okay. Yeah. And that, 
man, you're going to get it all today, that mirroring. Mm -hmm. And this is what, you know, you are now doing in dating. Mm -hmm. Mirroring, very complex neurobiological term, but it's it, very simply, um, when my daughter, my wife was prego, six-month prego, relatively hormonal, very energetic, and my two, my 15-year-old was then two, two, just about two, and they can't see each other. They're two-year-olds outside playing in a water table. She's getting potty trained at the time, and she's running around buck naked because mm -hmm. she was enjoying pooing in dog dishes and stuff. I mean, she was like, <laughs> time to figure this out. And so big sun hat, wife can't see her, and she's outside. Mm -hmm. Wife is inside, prego, cutting fruit. Here's the blood-curdling scream, terror scream coming out of Kaylee. Mm -hmm. Like bee sting, hair caught in the fence, like this is a different kind of scream. Mm -hmm. And what happens to my wife's central nervous system? Mm -hmm. She too feels terror. And does she run away from the terror? No. If you're in a mall and you hear screaming, there is an impulse to run away. Oh, my well, God, shoot her. Right? So you have uh, that impulse to run away. Even when it's your daughter. But if it's your daughter, that's your wolf pack. Mm. I'm going to run towards the scream. And she runs towards the scream. Most importantly, they meet eyes. Mm -hmm. The terror in you is being met by the terror in me. Yeah. But I know it's coming. You, you care about me. Because you're willing to actually be terrified when I'm terrified. And you're coming towards me. And it is this moment of neurobiological connection that this person is part of my wolf pack. Then my wife, bigger neocortex, bigger problem solver than a two-year-old, is looking to see what's going on. And my daughter is running from her poop as it's falling out of her rear. Mm -hmm. True story. <laughs> <laughs> I'll listen to that. You've heard this before and it's still funny as shit. I haven't heard this. No. No. So what happens in that moment when my wife... She starts laughing? She laughs yeah. and she puts that look on her face like you have and just glowing yeah. divine feminine love. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, puts her hands out and scoops her up, kisses her little cheeks. Let's go get you cleaned up and did it. What happens to my to my daughter's central nervous system? She Goes from comes. terror... <gasps> to tears <gasps> that was a terrible circumstance come here mm. oh that like wasn't really it. a bear you don't have to be scared of your poo it's okay mm -hmm. come here i hug you up get you cleaned up and we're good wash rinse repeat 10 million times over your lifetime mm. usually it goes the opposite for most kids it's don't cry. My mom, okay, right? My mom came running out screaming at me, we're shitting on everything. And so that that is mm. a misaligned or a mismirror or a broken mirror to where you're not mirroring safety to me. You're mirroring judgment. You're being too much. Mm. And I heard that as a sensitive little boy a million times. And little girls hear that all the time. Yeah, don't cry. Don't cry. Mm -hmm. Because when you cry, it makes me upset. Yeah. And that's the hurting where this real attachment that you're learning. Here's a guy that actually can be still and let me attach to him. Yeah. But not enmesh with me. I'm not going to lose myself in his narcissism. I'm not going to. And energetically, you can hold yourself as different, dif different. And feel that, oh, God, that stillness he, he can bring. It's just beautiful. Yeah. How do I actually teach him to get more of that? Wow. So acknowledging it, too. Acknowledging it, feeling yeah. it. And the, as you experience, you know, the tears on your face when you feel it for the first time, it's overwhelming. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. But it's in, it, it's in your control and your power to bring it up even more. Yeah. Right. I feel like acknowledging it and, and appreciating appreciating it and sharing like it's everything it means so much and I like love it. Love it. Yeah. And guys are like, what the hell? I didn't I, do I, anything. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> or or even I I'd watch him he's like, Oh really like kind of be confused a little bit. Oh, 
And I'm like, do you like? I'm like, I, I remember asking like, where did you learn this? Mm-hmm. And, and then him saying, I didn't like like. It's just in, it's really fascinating to ask that too. He somewhere in the woodpile, he either had a mentor, an older man that showed him, yeah. or he saw this saw it enough in his dad. Yeah. That his dad can listen to the chaos and crazy of mom. Yeah. It'd be good. It's like chill. we're good. It's just <laughs> shoes. I mean, we're okay. <laughs> We we really are okay. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's really, yeah. Wow. Again and again and again. And so you, this, this value of women, but I'll ask you that. Do you think you could have learned this without going through what you've gone through? No. I mean, it's interesting because I guess I want to say no because I went through it <laughs> as well, you know, but and, uh, it's really interesting too, really knowing, okay, I desire deeper emotional connection and more like, like just physical affection and these different things yeah. and then experiencing it and saying, well, I didn't even know what this was really like. Exactly. Like what you shared about wait, laying with your wife on the bed with the dogs and like, well, I didn't even, and then it's like, this is better than I could have even thought. Exactly. Know? And that picture that you're painting and it takes a while for you to really develop the emotional maturity Meaning that as a 30-year-old, you're, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah. You can't learn 40-year-old stuff until you're 40. Yeah. And wisdom. letting yourself be in this developmental process and like, oh, man, Psyche got a hold of me on that date. And I hope he doesn't call it yeah. because it's like, because that's a bad sign. Yeah. He's going to chase me. Well, he, that, that, that's, is he pursuing me in a loving, kind, sweet, divine way? Or a lustful way. Mm, yeah. And that ability for you guys to discern that. Mm-hmm. My mother did a terrible job in teaching me really? to, to discern that. Yeah, she was 50s housewife. They're objectified. Yeah. Just normal. I'm a pretty face and I make dinner. And it's like, no. Mm-hmm. You're responsible for teaching sons the value of women. Mm-hmm. But she didn't know the value of women. Yeah. And so daughters taught me that yeah so god picked <laughs> they picked apparently they picked well because that man i have been jumping all over this and it's a man it the beauty that i can see in them i had no idea was there wow yeah so it, it, it's a completely different way to be in the world yeah it feels very protective and like like protective but not hel- smothering yeah not a helicopter no because i'm not it's an it's an intention all the men listening to this, if you all the girls out there want to play this for a guy, if you're dating them, for you men to right. do nothing mm-hmm. but desire to protect you mm-hmm. is the divine masculine. Thinking that I need to say the right thing so she shuts up is not the divine masculine. <laughs> that You'd is, be wounded masculine, right? That is the wounded feeling function of masculine. Mm. Where I'm not defending that wound, I'm actually able to have my own internal feminine, feel some stillness in that, yeah. knowing that that's what you really need. Mm-hmm. You just need to see that I'm safe with your chaos. Yeah. I'm good with it. Yeah. There's value in it that you don't see. Yeah. And where you can see the value that he brings in his stupid faith. It's going to work out. Yeah. I mean, there's brilliance <laughs> in it. Like... <laughs> Seriously, it's fine. I mean, guys, we... we and then we feel stifled. Like it almost feels like you shoved it back down. Right. Or, and and like, that is the opposite of what I'm telling you. We need to let this come up, mm-hmm. but not in Psyche, not in Aphrodite, not demanding, not throwing things, not temper tantrums. But it's just, I just need some of your stillness right now. Listen to all my crazy and tell me if there's anything real here. Yeah. And then you'll get sex. And guys will go, okay. I mean, it's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> and then you, and so then you girls actually can just say that ahead of time. I need to be quiet. Not try and solve this. Not, you know. And and then we can have sex. And it, it's like, guys will go, really? <laughs> and they're like, okay. And then they start to go like this. And it's like, oh my God. Really? That's what goes on in your head? <laughs> it's like, holy shit. But there's a new respect that comes. Mm. There's a new admiration, a new reverence. I think adoration too is like an appropriate word. Yeah, admiration. I admire women for surviving as women. Mm. 
And that also has where the respect comes. Yeah. And it, it is that I'm willing to do the harder thing because they are doing the harder thing. Wow. And it, it, it when it all works, it's an amazing thing. <laughs> but yeah. it's like, guys, it's our intention to protect. Yeah. Like I am really in my intention to protect you. Mm-hmm. Not lust after you, not listen to you so I get laid, not all of this. It's like really there. Yeah. And it's rare. Wow. But you can see it. Yeah. And feel it. See it, feel it. Mm-hmm. Understanding that you can pull it out of men and actually their calling is to go on that hero's journey to find who the king really is. Yeah. And it's not you. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that's it's not. Yeah. But as once you get a hold of that stupid, simple faith as a man. Women are like, oh, okay, they can relax. They can submit into that very well-informed, very much listened to faith. Yeah. Like he's he gets it all and we're going to be okay. Wow. And divine masculine, sovereignty is the word for divine masculine and a lot of it. Sovereignty means absolutely everything in this world is exactly the way it's supposed to be right now. It's perfect. Mm. And men are like, yeah. Exactly. And anything that comes along, we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Women, on the other hand, are like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's fine. You didn't bring diapers. You didn't do this. You didn't do, do this. That. And oh my God, what's going to do in the chaos? But if I'm really listening to my wife saying, yeah, there, there might be chaos and I think we're okay. Wow. Because I had the diapers and I got this and I got this. Yeah. I don't think we need all that other shit. Really? Yeah, we can buy it. We can do this. We can... But I heard it and I value that, but I'm not discounting. Yeah. I'm reality checking. And I think we're okay. You're, you're, what you're sharing is reminding me of this image I saw. I think it was in like an Eckhart Tolle book or something, but it, it showed the forest and says, this is divine order. And it was chaos. Yeah. In a forest versus like, you know, a picket the fence, like all of this was like, this is actually this. Oh, it said this is divine. Yeah. Divine order. And it was right. beauty of a, of a forest and how it grows. And it's so like. Yeah. And you, you feel the feminine. Yeah. But it's contained in a masculine external of like, this is the way it's supposed to be. Probably the four would be the mat. Yeah. Really and so it, it is. It's. It's the way God designed it. Yeah. And when we fall into the way God designed it, look at the smile on your yeah. face. It is like, it's like, it's a hell of a lot more fun, right? Yeah. It's like a piece that, that comes over you or that you feel or you can play with. Doug, thank you oh, so, so much. Welcome. As soon as I knew everyone that Doug was coming here, I'm like, I've been wanting to interview you. And then to do it in person is just special. And, yeah. And well, so this, I will show this to a bunch of my female clients. This is, and men, men yeah. need to watch this. Yeah, absolutely. Share, reshare this, you know, tag. You can see really tag any of the men that you want. Tag all your exes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I wasn't crazy. Yes. No, you're not crazy as women. You're not. It's yeah. not. It, it's beautiful. It's chaotic. It's it's because it's emotional. Yeah. And emotions as men, you know, if you're dating and a guy is really scared of emotion, that's the biggest flag you can have. I think it's, do you feel like also because I look at where when I've dated men like that, I just didn't have a loving relationship with my own emotions. Yeah. You know? And then to, then when you have the contrast of that, you're allowing it. And then you also see more clearly of like, oh, wow, like I really wasn't accepting of right. these. Right. And, and, and yeah. that lack of acceptance came out both as Psyche yeah. and both as Aphrodite. The divine feminine is really being in the chaos and yet still. Yeah. And men... We're in stillness, but not in chaos. Yeah. And being able to find that balancing between them, appreciating the chaos and appreciating the stillness, that is the reflection of divine God. Wow. And when it's, yeah, when it, when, yeah, there you go. When you feel it, yeah, mm-hmm. feel it because it, it, you know it now. Mm-hmm. And now you know what to look for. And now you know how you could paint a picture to actually make it. Yeah. And men are, we're, oh, it's fine. We don't need that. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's, all, it's true. I like the man voice. <laughs> well, it's that's uh, yeah, divine, divine masculine is wise. Boyhood energy yeah. is very disregarding and and minimizing. Yeah, that's not. So, well, thank you. Yeah, this of is fantastic. We'll how, do this again. Yes, Let's do some more. I would love that. This, this would be a blast. And then how? So you have your book driven. 
I have my book Driven and then everything for Doug, Dr. Doug is IamDriven.com. Yeah. And you have an awesome assessment on there. So everyone, you can go take an assessment, see if you're driven, which um, will you share really quickly what that is? So Driven, I could have called the book The Shame-Based Personality Type. I could have called it the trauma-based personality type. So very simply, um, there's 5 10% of the population that are actually wired for a very chaotic, scary world. And so our default feeling in our body is fear, greater than most people. And so that's my joke about being driven, this assessment, a lot of research behind it, but if you're driven in this way, you have to learn how to develop a different relationship with your fear. Mm. Otherwise, it will kill you. Mm-hmm. Or you die in your addictions or you marry really poor people. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. And so it's that, and that's what the book's about. It's just that specific niche, which you fall into and probably most yeah. of the listeners fall into. So it should be helpful. I liked the quiz because I also loved the circle and how it showed you on a scale um, which one you, you know, you like perfectionism or this or yeah. that, like w- where you are on that Yeah, scale. and so it, my my imposter syndrome so bad that I spent a lot of time developing that, in, in developing that assessment mm-hmm. to make sure I'm not talking out of my ass um, as more than, <laughs> more than I'm comfortable. Yeah. But it, it is it is 10 different qualities that I've used to define driven. Not all of us are the same. There's different types of drivens and there's different insights to be had. But it's really about helping you shift your identity mm-hmm. from you're not your feelings, you're not your thoughts, you're a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> that, literally. And I'm a homo sapien. Yeah. And then I can, from my soul level, look at my monkey mind and my elephant's reactions in this curious divine way. Yeah. And then you can do soul development. And as you are embodying more of your wisdom soul... Feeling your flesh, hearing your monkey mind, but actually anchoring yourself in this third thing that is that is so much wiser and so much more effective and happier and joy filled. <laughs> Liberated. <laughs> freedom. Yeah. Freedom. <clears throat> freedom from yeah, it's freedom of soul is what we just want. I hope you enjoyed the episode and you can find a ton more free tips on my Instagram under Rebecca Boatman. If you are curious about my online membership and community, you can click the link that is in the description and see the page that explains everything you get to support you on your journey to attracting and building a healthy relationship. And I hope to see you inside.